This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Cafe Bella Vista Restaurant and Pizzeria. Azito, give it a go with Azito. Refresh Pure Water. And Reading Cinemas, experience the difference. It's 10.30, it's couch time. Big show, welcome back Australia and New Zealand to another Big Couch. Check out who's on the show today. On the show today, we're talking raw with Vanessa Jean and her daughter Ariel. Can't wait for that one. Healthy lunches. Anika Kay comes in to talk to a great director of a children's movie. Steve Collins talks Japan and other places to travel to. And later on, Taylor Divertini's in to talk movies. And we've got a fantastic opening coming up by Reese Curl. A very big couch, and of course, my very good friend Barbara McNaught is in to talk about Melbourne Cup. But it is such a big show, so let's get it started now. It's showtime on a couch. Reese Curl is a very talented young man. He uh, played Oliver in a play very recently and he was on the couch only a few weeks ago. Today he's opening the couch with another new song. It's a fantastic Michael Jackson song. It's called Ben, Here's Reese. Ben, the two of us need look no more. We Thank you very much, Reese Curl. I'm sure you'll be back on the couch again. Off you go now and play with your toys. Okay. <laughs> Someone that never plays with her toys is a lady who's sitting right next to me and she's been very busy while I've been in Bali. Barbara McNaught, welcome back Thank from you. Momentum, of course. What's new with Momentum? Momentum is keeping momentum going. It's, right? How hard is it to keep your momentum going? Um, you have to keep momentum to keep momentum. And you're looking beautiful in Thank the couch. Thank you so much. Can I say? Yes, is this I one of your own creations? I have to, in case there's a No, this is, I have to, being unpaid, promote. It's Zara. 
Zara, it's beautiful. Thank you. Love the colour. Can we have Thank it for you. after the show? I want to try and match it. <laughs> Absolutely. Beautiful. Yes. Now, what are we talking about today? Because I know I've, I can see a Melbourne Cup brochure there. It's a beautiful brochure. It's coming so up next month, isn't very it? Very colourful, yes. 4th of November, mm. of course, Melbourne Cup. And this is the Melbourne Cup at Pamelia Hilton. So we're moving the venue this year? Uh, already last year we had in Pamelia. Yes. Year. Melbourne Cup at the Pamelia, beautiful venue. Beautiful venue, beautiful food, three-course luncheon accompanied by driftwood wines. Now it's on Tuesday the 4th of November. That's right. And Yep, go on. This traditionally, mm -hmm. as our Melbourne Cup for years, supports Canteen, a beautiful organization for young people living with cancer. So uh, we obviously it's done. We have a fundraising raffle with fabulous prizes, and the proceeds from the raffle go to Canteen. Now, I know prizes are really important, but for me, and I know for many people, they want to know what they're going to eat. Oh, they're going to have a... Well, it's a right know question. I you, you look after people when they come to your yes. event. What sort of food are we having? It's a beautiful Tricos luncheon, you mm -hmm. know, and driftwood wines, and bubbly on arrival, beautiful. and beer for guys that want to have a beer. You know, I have to say, every single time I've come to your events, you can never say there's not enough alcohol or drinks or food. It's, yes. And it's so lavish. Thank you. It's beautiful, well mm. organised. And I'm, I'm assuming this one's going to be just as good. Oh, it's Door fantastic. Door prizes, anything big you can tell us about? That well, uh, there are some surprises coming. So, for example, we have the best hat and outfit competition, and the winner will get fabulous prizes for all the efforts they're doing. We have a Joseph Ripko fashion parade by 1202 Boutique. The winner, the lady that's looks fabulous. Stunning. Yes, we'll get $500 voucher. But you know, I notice every year you look more stunning than all of them there. But I can't win the prize. I know. So uh, yes. you, I wouldn't bother. I wouldn't come this year. Your oh, clothes are just darling. too good. Okay, I just, I just go very understated. Yeah? No, look, a very small fascinator. You are, the women are beautiful. I mean, the, the, the women really do dress up to the nines. But I believe you've got a fantastic performance this year oh, from we've got X Factor. That's right. The X Factor contestant, CD, she puts her voice for Canteen and she's going to perform for Canteen for the charity. How did you score that one? Darling, when I was watching X Factor, which I'm a big fan, of course, and I, I really loved, loved her voice and her performance. At a certain stage, she left the show, and I thought it's meant to be. She's from Perth, Snap her and up. she's 16. Oh, wow. And all I can do, I can ask. And there's some personal story of her friend. Her mom shared it with me. So she puts her heart to the cause with a big, big, big dedication, and Wonderful. we're very grateful. So we've got great food, great wine, great clothes, great venues. Sweepstakes, big Sweep screens. Stakes, big screens. Raffle. Music. And raffle. live entertainment from 2.30. That is amazing. People can dance. And do we have to pay for this, or is it absolutely no. free? <laughs> yes. <it's more laughs> oh, there's a charge. Uh, there has to be. Is it all for darling. charity? How yes. much is it? It's hundred fifty-five dollars per person. You know what? That's cheap for a Melbourne Cup event. That's, That's cheap. Right. Is that cheaper than we've had in the past? It's it's kept the price. It's oh, not wow. going up like everyone else is putting the prices up. Yep. We don't. The okay. venue is good to us and doesn't put the price too much. Maybe a little, little, but. And if people want to go, yes, wh where can they get their tickets from? On momentumwf.com.au and on Eventbrite. On screen right now. So yeah. Momentum WF, this flyer stands out because yep. it's so colourful and striking. And on the event bright, just Google Melbourne Cup for Canteen, it will come Fantastic. up. Fantastic. Anything quickly you want to touch on before we say goodbye? Yes, well I'm not going to relax after Melbourne Cup. We're working very hard you on would a never relax. very exciting project. I'm going to say it very slow. Okay. On the camera. Okay, there you go. And is the Pet Purse Expo. Pet Purse Expo for all pet lovers. 65% of Australian population has pets, and the other 35 is thinking of having pets. Do you have any pets? I have a cat now. I'm house sitting oh, a cat yeah, of my you daughter. Your own yes. Oh. Well, I wouldn't phrase it this way, darling. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I'm, I'm, I'm a very lover. in love with I it. I love a black and white it's one. It's good to hear, darling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should talk after the show, Barbara. Okay, so no, the Pet Pers Expo will be on the 6th and 7th of, des of December yep. at the Pers Convention and Exhibition Centre. Beautiful venue. You can become exhibitor, you can become a sponsor, you can buy already tickets on Eventbrite. Yep, and the money for this is going to who? Who is your charity? Well, the money for this is going to keep... We're actually promoting non-for-profit organisations that support 
the welfare and well-being of, of pets. Fantastic. We're promoting the responsible ownership, but the two days will be filled with entertainment. Mm. And we have an ambassador that is just announced, Dr. Kate Lindsay, mm. who is very often on radio and TV. She's an animal behaviorist, and she will Fantastic. be presenting the six tips how to keep your pet brain fit. Never oh, mind really? the pet owner. Well, don't ever the give them Panadol. Never give them Panadol. I found that keeps them too fit. They don't get up again. Did you know that? Uh, no, I Is pretend it? yes. No, I don't. No, really. yeah, the, the pet. You mean the owner, owner or, the, or the pet? No, no, the pet. You can't give Panadol to a pet because it, okay. it just knocks them out completely forever. But this is fantastic. If people want more information, they can check out the Momentum WF website. That's right. Now, uh, the wonderful work that you do, there it is on screen right now. Thank you. You do an amazing job. We have a bit of a laugh because I know that we're good sports. But the Melbourne Cup is coming up in November, so we want people to get involved. That's the 4th of November. Please buy your tickets now. Don't leave it to the last minute thinking, oh, I'll get them at the end. They're not going to go down in price. Get them now. You're going to miss out because I know the other That's event, right. the Pink Ribbon Ball, was a sellout, folks. So you left it too late. And the, the pet... The pet pet Expo. Expo? Yes. The tickets are also and the exhibitors, Beautiful. you know. But I come back and I talk more about we'll it. We'll talk more Am about I that right? later. Yes, you time. are. Yes. So thank you, darling. Thank you, darling. And have you done any more interviews online? Oh, hello, darling. Yep. Yes. So check that out as well. Yes. Who, we, sneak preview. Who's the last one you've done? Well, we did the coverage from the Men in Black Ball. It's time to be happy. Beautiful. And interviews with the guest. Check it out on the website. Check it's out. time to be hello, happy. Hello, darling. It's time to be happy. Time to be happy. That's right. Well, I'm always happy because uh, if you don't know how to contact us here at the couch, you must be crazy because this is how you do it. If you're looking for more info on anything you've seen on today's show, head to thecouch.com.au. It's where you'll find all the links for our guests, plus clips from the show, backstage photos, and even exclusive movie reviews. You can also sign up as a couchie and be part of our competitions, including Spin It to Win It. New Zealand viewers, that's open to you too. So jump online and check it out now, thecouch.com.au. I love, love, love working with Barbara McNaught, even though she doesn't like working with me. She has no choice. We wear the same sort of clothes, <laughs> except I look better. No, she's going to hit me. Vanessa Jean, welcome back. And you've got somebody with you today. I do. I've got Ariel. my beautiful daughter, Ariel, Hello. with me. Hi. Did mummy make you come in today? No. Oh, really? Oh, that's not what I wanted to hear. <laughs> she was begging to Try not to focus on Ariel. <laughs> you know what it's like working with me, and you probably said to my mum, you can't be the only one in our family to work with that stunning hot man. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You're a liar. <laughs> oh, welcome. Welcome, Ariel. What are we talking about today, Vanessa? Well, we're following up from our last uh, time together, Fred, and this time I brought some food, because remember last time I didn't have any. So we're going to yes. just go deep. <laughs> You've all got food No, but you up. do have food sometimes, but I don't realise it's for human consumption. Oh! But then, no, no, I've got to say, I, but then I do try it, and I always try and take the mickey out of her, but I have to, deep down, I think, oh, it's actually all right. Yeah, it's like better than all right, her. baby. All of you clean it up after we film. I know. So what we're going to do is we're looking at whole foods mm. and how to incorporate them into children's lunch boxes to fuel them for the day and beautiful ideas. And Ariel's got some smoothie ideas and she's even going to share with us her little blessing prayer. All right, let's tell us say. about your smoothie. Um, well, this morning I made a smoothie, mm -hmm. but it's not my favourite. Because <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have mangoes. And that's your mum's fault, isn't it? <laughs> Yes. We only eat oh, seasonally, well. Fred. Organic strawberries have come in and we had some frozen raspberries. You only raspberries. Eat seasonally? Organic. <laughs> seasonally, yeah. that's right. Okay, well, you look like someone that eats every day. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Seasonal produce, oh, my sorry. mistake. So tell me about this one that you, what did you make this morning? Um, I made one with strawberries yep. Go for and it. raspberries, lacuma, maple syrup. Honey, cinnamon. Um, is it really vanilla. good fun? Is vanilla. it good fun making your own thick shakes? Or, I mean, I know yeah. Mum's beside you, and you're smiling and really excited, which is really <laughs> unusual. Kids don't get excited about food. Why are you so excited about raw food? Um, is it good? Yeah. Do you like it seriously? Yes. Mum doesn't give you money when you leave the studio. <laughs> no. She hasn't promised to buy you an iPhone six. Not that. You no. Don't like it. No. Take that back. Why would she oh, punish you like that? Oh, bring me an ice cream, Mum. <laughs> 
So what we do in our family is basically it's not just all raw, it's mm. whole food cooking. Mm. So do you want to tell them about the bliss balls that we do, Ariel, and how well they, and they go probably pass for, me one for if meals? You like, Ariel. Um, so here, I'll tell you which ones okay. they are because we've you. got, tell we us. have, which ones are these, Ariel, do you remember? Um, cacao and... Just hold them steady and there. peppermint. Oh. Yep, is cacao it? and peppermint. So we just use the doTERRA Can I pure essential oils. Can I try Pass one, one to Fred. Are they, are they fr good enough to eat? Yes. So the one that you're about to eat is cassia and wild orange okay. essential oils. Is that good? <laughs> they were just out of the fridge. The oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hence why they're a bit crunchy. And mm. the other ones without cacao are lime and coconut, which are Ariel's favourite. They are quite nice, thank you very much. They were just out of the fridge, but they're not fresh then. Yeah. No, they're still fresh, they're just harder. <laughs> oh, mamma mia. They're fresh out of the fridge. They're fresh out of the fridge, that's fine. But whose fridge? That's the main thing. <laughs> Mine! Thank you very much. That is actually really nice. So. Did you want to touch on anything else? Because now Ariel's really excited. Yeah, Ariel, what would you like to share? What do you love in your lunchbox? Um, avocado and you olives? obviously not a very well child. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you have, can I ask you, do you have chocolate bars and those really no. unhealthy, no, cheesels? They're disgusting. <laughs> Good on you, babe. What about cheesels? <laughs> Chips? What are they? <laughs> Fred, so you think I'm lying. My kids, and Connor's sitting over there, who's 12, and a man mountain, healthiest kid on the block, awesome mm. at sports, really intelligent, mummy boast. Obviously well, both second of them mummy have. boast, I should say. But what I'm saying mm. is, is when children are brought up with these incredible foods, they learn to love real food. And that's not to say they don't want some fun things once in a while. But this is real food and it actually fills them it, and Vanessa? sustains them. How do we do it as a parent? How do, how do we, we do it? We eat seasonal produce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need to eat foods that are in season, that are abundant and as fresh as possible. Stay mm -hmm. away from all the packaged stuff all the time. You know, an avocado has more goodness in it mm -hmm. than something out of a dead packet of whatever, you know, that yep. you'd rather eat the cardboard box of. And then throw things like hemp seeds in, like when Ariel has her avocado with olives in some sourdough or mm -hmm. a wrap, there's hemp seeds sprinkled on it, you know, so she's getting her omegas. Can parents come to you? Because I know you do run they courses. Because I know it's hard to, on a five minute segment, yeah, try and cover is. everything. So I do whole food cooking classes, yep. raw food cuisine, um, working with essential oils to bring health and vitality back that way as well. Foodalchemy.com.au. That's the one. Retreats, cooking classes, raw food classes, and weekly gatherings as well. And the well. most important reason to do all this is? Because we return to our natural state of health, blissfulness, and pure joy. As you just saw Do with my little girl. Do you ever have Hungry Jacks or Burger King or um, McDonald's? No, what's that? Yeah. Oh. Obviously, she's got the new iPhone 6 in her bag. <laughs> Obviously, she's going to be very disappointed in a week's time when it doesn't work. <laughs> but thank you very much for coming in today. Can I just say, actually, on a serious note, these were wonderful. Do you know the only addition, because everything's about moderation, I'd actually have these probably with a can of Coke. Oh, you're disgusting. <laughs> Ariel, tell him what you think. Yeah, see that jaw? Look at her face. I'm surprised the cameraman didn't get a shot of you. <laughs> What's wrong with a can of Coke, Ariel? Everyone drinks Coke, don't they? Uh, no, not Why everyone. Why not? Because it's disgusting and it's terrible for you. And what does it do for you? What, you know everything. Go on. <laughs> Throw out my encyclopedias now that I've got you. Tell him it's a tin full of sugar and fake stuff. Baby. I was only stirring. <laughs> Vanessa Bean. And it's got MSG. All right, you can stop now. <laughs> I'm just about to buy you a Samsung Galaxy. <laughs> Thank you to Barbara, thank you to Vanessa, thank you to Ari. You've been great, great talent, well done. We'll take a break and be back with another, oh, an Annie K, another child. After the break, you're watching The Couch. This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Cafe Bella Vista Restaurant and Pizzeria. Azito, give it a go with Azito. Refresh Pure Water and Reading Cinemas. Experience the difference. Welcome back to the couch. I couldn't get away from children today if I tried. We've got Ariel back. Ariel, we forgot to do something very, very quickly. You want to do a food blessing for me? Mm -hmm. Where's this come from? Um, at my school, mm -hmm. I was learning a blessing that we do for morning tea. And why do we do this? Is this to bless the food that we're yeah. about to eat? Do you want to do it just quickly for me? Okay. Here we go. Ariel. Barukata Aduna Eluhenu Melet Haulam Hamuti Lehem Bit 
Haaretz. Amen. I hope that didn't say this fat guy sitting next to me is a real pain in the back. <laughs> Oh, no, because I'm oh, going to translate that's, that's it. that's a good idea. We actually record the show and I'm going to watch it and then if it is, I'm going to edit you out. What's that translation? Yeah, I know what it is. Uh, from one child, it reminds me of Annabelle the doll on the left. Oh. You've got uh, Annie Kay on the right. Over to you, Annie Kay. Thanks, Fred. Today on Kids Beers, we have Genevieve Bailey. We're doing a telephone interview. She is a filmmaker and director of the award-winning movie I'm Eleven. When I first watched it, I was fascinated by the different opinions that the 11-year-olds had. Hi, Genevieve. Hi, Annie. How are you? Um, I, read your, I read an interview in which you say that the idea from this movie came from wanting to see if 11 was still a good age for kids because it was for you. Did you find that this was the case? Yeah, definitely. When I first left Australia, I'd never been overseas and I wanted to explore my favourite age in life. And that was when I was 11 and I was curious to see if 11-year-olds around the world we're having as much fun as I did, and I definitely found that to be the case. Because when you're 11, you don't feel like a little kid anymore, but you're not yet a teenager. There are lots of 11-year-olds from all around the world in this movie. Um, how did you select the participants? Yeah, well, very early on, I decided that when I landed in a new country, the easiest way to find kids was to go through schools. But I was also actually quite conscious that teachers might select the children with the best marks or the children with acting experience and I, I wanted to have much more of a random selection of kids in the film so I decided not to go through schools. I Instead I would hit the streets, I'd go to marketplaces, talk to people in bookstores, ask friends of friends of friends in different countries and try and find children that way and I found such wonderful personalities through doing it in that really organic way that I decided to continue with that process so it was quite an adventure every time I would land and, and how I'd actually end up finding the children. Wow. In one case, you go to an orphanage in Kerala and interview kids there. Um, there were obviously many more kids than just 11-year-olds. Did you select children purely by age or was it there other factors? Yeah, it was purely by age. So I had these three rules for myself. The first was that they had to be 11. The second, they had to be want, to want to be involved in the film. And the third was that their parent or one of their guardians had to give permission. So when I arrived in Kerala in India, um, to the children's home, there was boys and girls ranging from two all the way up to 16. So there was four children who were 11. So rather than just picking one, I interviewed all of them. Then I went back the following year and there was two new children who had become 11, obviously, since I was last there. So I included them as well. So there's actually six kids from India in the film. My favourite interviews in the movies were the ones with Sihan and Remy. Is it Sihan? Uh -huh. Am I pronouncing that right? Yeah, Sihan in Morocco. Yeah. Um, Sihan, because she had such a strong bond with her family and it was really amazing to watch them bond. And Remy, because he was so mature and insightful about life. Did you find a difference in the maturity between 11-year-olds of your generation and 11-year-olds of mine? Yeah, I think it's tricky because when I was 11, it's hard to look back now as an adult and compare the maturity level because, of course, I was a kid at that time. So I must say that now as an adult making I'm 11, the feedback from a lot of people who have seen it has been, wow, the children are so mature. I would never have been, you know, so thought-provoking when I was a child. But it's really hard to say because you can't go back in time and meet yourself as an 11-year-old. But you sort of can if you interview yourself when you're 11, which is why... I love encouraging people who are your age to actually interview yourself or get someone to interview you so that you can capture this special time in life so that when you're older you can look back and see what you thought about the world when you were 11. In your travels, were there any places or people that were particularly memorable? Something that really stuck in your mind? Yeah, I think they all were because, like I mentioned, I'd never been outside of Australia. So every new city they landed in was com a complete new adventure for me. And I think the children in India in particular really helped uh, me acknowledge the position of privilege a lot of people are in around the world. I don't come from a wealthy family, but we live in a country like Australia. We have clean water. We have ability to go to school. Even if you don't have a lot of money, you can still access education. And I realized through traveling around the world that a lot of people, especially girls and women, don't always have those opportunities. So I, I feel very happy to have grown up in a loving family and to have the friends that I have, education as well. Um, after I'm 11 was completed, you went back to Melbourne and set up the Darlinghurst Foundation that helps empower women and children. I believe that all the funds you raise go to helping educate children and there are minimal administrative costs. And that's exactly right, Annie. I set up the Darling Heart Foundation with Henry, who produced I'm 11 with me because 
we wanted to find a way that we could help on a long-term basis, um, provide some support and empower the kids in India that we met, not just the 11-year-olds, but all of the children, children's homes. So we wanted to set up a way that we could have a long-term way of keeping in touch and supporting these kids and hopefully in the future lots of other kids. And we wanted to make sure that when people get involved or make a donation or um, perhaps donate clothes or books or different things for the kids that they can actually know that it really reaches them. I think there's a lot of charities in the world and a lot of people are asking for you know our money and sometimes people might wonder oh, when I donate will it actually make a difference and we wanted to set up something whereby none of us are paid we're all volunteers and any money that comes in actually goes to where it's needed in India so that's um, something we've been working on the last few years and our goals at the moment are to focus on education fund for the kids because they're very bright and they love school and when they finish school, if they want to go on to university or college, our goals at the moment are to raise money so that they can do that. You told me that you've kept in touch with most of the kids in the film, so if you do make another sequel, which I hope you will, will it be about the same kids or will you use a different age group and a different set of kids? Yeah, I'm glad to hear that you would love to see a sequel because I definitely want to make one and now that we've finished I'm 11 and people have been watching it around the world, a lot of them ask, you know, what, what, where are the kids now? What are they up to? How are they going? And so we'd love to make a sequel so that people can see how they're growing up. And we're about to release the film in the US, which I'm very excited about. So some of the kids that we'll be able to revisit are in the US and are actually 20 this year. So wow. they're growing up and, and life's changing and they're at college and following their dreams. So a sequel is definitely on the cards for I'm 11. I'm really looking forward to it. And they will be, yeah, older than 11. And I made the film over six years, so they're not all the same age at the same time. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I'm really excited about keeping in touch with them for the rest of my life, to be honest. I can't imagine not wanting to follow their lives for a very long time. Thank you so much, Genevieve, for being on the show today. We really enjoyed talking to you. And no it was really great to be interviewed by an 11-year-old for a change. <laughs> I'm usually the one interviewing the 11-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to check out the trailer, here it is. If I could change anything in the world, I would change... Hmm. It's a hard question. I've always said to myself that I don't grow up too fast, you know? religion you're from, they all have the same sort of meaning in the end. I'm going to be the tree for Christmas because we're like messed up financially. <laughs> People today, they say like, oh my god, are you going to get married to Andrew? And I say, no, I'm 11. <laughs> When you were an adult, your voice changed again, then you get married to the woman you love, then you get children, like grandchildren, and then, boom, it all ends. I've always dreamed that there would be no frontiers, that the world would be a single country. I'm not a citizen of France, I'm a citizen of the world. in one and two. Why? Because they have great dancing moves and plus nice romance. <laughs> wow, that looks good. If you want to get the movie, you can get it on iTunes. I highly recommend it. And if you like this movie as much as I did, you can contact Genevieve or check out The Couch website, thecouch.com.au for more details. Back to you, Fred. Thank you very much. That was fantastic. And Annie Kay, I can't wait for the next one. Thank you very much. Okay, coming up after the break, more fun with Steve Collins. We talk about his great adventure to Japan and more. Stay tuned after the break. This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Cafe Bella Vista Restaurant and Pizzeria. Azito, give it a go with Azito. 
Refresh Pure Water. And Reading Cinemas. Experience the difference. Welcome back to the couch here on Aurora Television and uh, Face TV in New Zealand on Sky Television. Okay, we've got travel coming up now with our very good friend Steve Collins. Welcome back. Thank you very and much, And I'm Fred. back from Bali. Konnichiwa. No need to be rude. Oh, okay. I can give you a couple of... Konnichiwa is like, how are you? Is uh, yeah, hello, how do you do? Now you've yes. just come back from... From Japan, literally, yeah, a couple of days ago. I got back from Japan. I was over there for 10 days. Had the best time. It is fantastic. Out of 10, 1 to 10, what would you give it as a holiday destination? Well, it depends where you are. I would okay. give overall. I'd give it eight point five out of ten. Oh, that's good. Uh, because Tokyo, I love, but Tokyo is a little bit more stressful than the other cities that I visited because it's you know it's one of the biggest metropolitan areas in the world. Three thirty five point five million people live that's in Greater Tokyo. Is it very congested? You know what the trains are. And it's got a great train service. But when you get out on the streets mm. and when you get in the centre of Tokyo, they've got these wonderful wide boulevards and you do not have tr problems with traffic because most people use public transport oh, wow. there. There's no parking. In order to buy a car there, you have to prove that you have a place to park it before you can even buy it. They're very conscious of environment and also they're very they clean, are aren't they? Extraordinarily clean. It's amazing. This is Mount Fuji, of course. This is... Uh, oh, and this is in Osaka. There's this amazing tower. It's supposed to represent the Eiffel Tower, but it doesn't. But this is, they all get dressed up as anime and, mm. and manga characters there. It's a, it's a funny sort of place. Oh, wow. they, a, lot of the, a lot of the young people get dressed up. They sort of um, adopt new personalities, mm. particularly on a Sunday, which is the national day off uh, in, in Japan. And what are we looking at here? This is Shibuya. This is the centre of Japan. This is a business cross. And see, the, these two are quads, cosplay people. They dress up as these anime or manga characters for some reason. Ah, this is at uh, Odaiba. This is this massive, great big robot. And there we go. If you can't pan back, there you are, the Statue of Liberty. We're already in New York. Amazing. But there's people. Ah, oh, food. That looks this good. is ramen. I went to the ramen museum in Yokohama. Yum. Now, the museum is all about ramen was really the first really cheap food that they had mm. there and the ramen restaurants well, were ramen? everybody. What is ramen it? is basically a, a noodle soup but but every district has its own sort of ramen and when you go to the ramen museum there's all these different types. It's a wonderful place because they've recreated Tokyo in the 1950s with those very very small uh, small houses and the, the narrow alleys and it's got a lot of style and it's got a lot of atmosphere. And an important one for me, yeah. you know when you go to the restaurants, do you have yeah. to sit on the floor with your legs crossed? No, I didn't sit on the oh, floor once. So they have chairs. Oh, I hate uh, those but you ones. would love it, Fred, honestly. Now, uh, I'm going okay. to tell you right now, Jap Japan has a reputation for being expensive. Okay. Rubbish. Forget it. Japan is actually a very cheap destination. I would go to local restaurants mm -hmm. Uh, see, there he is. This guy's wearing a dress. This is what they do. They dress up there to be different. But I was going to local restaurants there and I was eating, I would eat a different meal each night because I would mm. have, a, say, a sushi or a yakitori or whatever, go to these places. And the average cost of a meal, and it was a mm. big meal, was uh, $8, $8.50, round That's about that cheap. region. It's fantastic. And the beer was really cheap, about $5 for a large beer. What's the service like? What are they Service for is excellent. You go into these places, mm -hmm. you're greeted straight away. The first thing they do is they plonk down, uh, give you a cold towel to, to, to wash yourself, mm -hmm. and they give you a cold drink, and then uh, you order your meal. Now, for me, who doesn't speak Japanese, it was very, very easy. They give you a menu which has mm -hmm. got photos on it, oh, wow. or they have um, the plastic facsimiles of what they cook there. Oh, really? So you just either point to the photo or you point to the plastic, and they completely understand so what I'm you want. So I'm assuming they don't speak a lot of English? Some do. A lot of the waiters that, that, I, that I encountered uh, in these restaurants mm. were students, and they were quite happy to try their English out on me. I had some really good conversations, and funnily enough, I got a lot of Facebook friends out of it just through meeting oh, waiters wow. and waitresses in these restaurants. They're very, very keen to So if you had to, to give me life. five reasons to go to Japan, what would they be apart from the, the it's cheap? Well, first of all, uh, the food is, is definitely okay. uh, a reason for going. The culture there, the culture is wonderful. The culture, it's, it's probably the most cultural place I've ever been because it is not very westernised. Mm. Now, they all wear dinner, business suits, etc., etc. But their traditions are very, very important to them and you always see people dressed in, in, in traditional garb 
uh, uh, so the tradition is is there. The beauty of the place, the gardens that you see there, their gardens are very, very formal. They're very, very stylized, but they are beautiful. The people themselves are, are very, very friendly. Mm. Uh, but I think really that the re one of the other reasons to go there is because it is just so different from what we're used to. That is the sky tree. That's it in Tokyo. You go up that... Now look at that house. This is an example. The reason I put that in is... That's a house? That is a house. It is very, very narrow because land there uh, is very, very scarce. Very limited. You build your house on the land you've got. Now look at that. That was not very, very wide at was all. Was it a they nice put house? Two well, I didn't go inside it, but it was near where I was staying. I was staying with a friend in Yokohama. I was staying in, a, mm. in his apartment. The average size of an apartment in Japan is 60 square metres. He was in a giant one. He had... 80 square metres, oh, and they measure the rooms. The rooms, uh, they, they have bamboo mats traditionally on the floors, mm. and, a, a, and a room is a three-mat room, which means it's 18 square metres, which means it's a very, very small room. Uh, so they, they are used to living in small places. Their cars are all very small mm. um, because they have to be mainly for the parking. And it's just... Uh, but the trains are the main things there. The trains are fantastic. I think we've got some footage. We did. I went on up. the Shinkansen, which is Let's the bullet train. Oh, okay. This thing travels at over 300 kilometres an is. hour. Here, it's coming into the station. How beautiful this is This is that Tokyo way? Station. It's very, very sleek, very, very beautiful, very, very fast. It looks when you very get funky, inside, doesn't it? It does, and it's so comfortable when you get inside. Now, here we are. We're heading off to Kyoto. This is just leaving Tokyo Station. Now we're in the country. We are travelling at over 300 kilometres an That's hour. Heads wide and it footage. is just amazing. You're sitting there. The train is so smooth. It's very, very comfortable. Mm. I was on the Nozomi, which is the fastest of them. There's how much did it cost you to do that? It cost, to go from Osaka to Tokyo cost me $144. Now, bear in mind, that is 538 kilometres or mm. something, and I did it in just over two hours, two well, hours and 14 minutes. An hour, and at 300 and it's, it's, it's luxurious. So amazing. it's it's money well spent and it's a great way to, it's a great experience. And you're going up and you pass Mount Fuji, which we saw before. And Beautiful. on and on the, the right-hand side, you pass a lot of the coastline as well. Beautiful, beautiful way Sounds to like travel. Sounds like you had an awesome time. I had a great time. And now we're going to find out information on RadioRoaming.com? We will find out uh, the information on RadioRoaming.com. Did we you do any interviews? I did some interviews. Beautiful. I interviewed a lady uh, about soba noodles, which is a particular type of noodle. It takes you 10 years to train to make these noodles. I saw a bloke uh, doing them and I interv uh, interviewed a lady and... I, I then had to have a soba meal, of course, and it was just delicious. Their food is light. Sounds like Their food awesome has got a lot of texture, uh, but they don't, they're not chilli hot or they're not spicy. They're very, very delicate flavours, and they're just beautiful. That's uh, Radio Roaming's view to Japan. Always interesting and riveting and always very honest and open, which is very easy to follow. Where are you going to next, do you know? Um, I'm heading off to Exmouth uh, this week. Exmouth here in Perth, yeah, WA. Well, well, here in Western Australia, not in be. Perth, yeah. And we've got, uh, if people want more information, uh, no, we're going to drop that because we've run out of time. Thank you very much. Radioroaming.com is the place to go to. Steve Collins is the man. Thank you very much for being here today. As always, a pleasure. Pleasure, Fred. We'll see you in the next few weeks. Yes, Back again in the studio. Do. Coming up after the break, because we've run out of completely time, we'll just say goodbye to Taylor right after this. This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Cafe Bella Vista Restaurant and Pizzeria. Azito, give it a go with Azito. Refresh Pure Water. And Reading Cinemas, experience the difference. Welcome back to The Couch here on Aurora Television and, uh, of course, Foxtel and uh, Face TV in New Zealand. And can I just remind all my fantastic viewers, please tell your friends that The Couch is now on the web. You can watch us every week live 
at the same time you watch it on Foxtel for all your friends that don't have Foxtel on thecouch.com.au. Please tell them and please join up and become a couchy because as from next week, we'll be giving away $50 vouchers thanks to Faster Pasta Restaurants. So there's a reason to be a, a part of the couch. Okay, this lady <laughs> knows it as well. Hello, Taylor. Welcome back. Thanks for having me. Happy being I have been very, very good. It's been a while since we uh, had you here. It has. It's now, I'm hoping that you might be a, a regular presenter doing different things on the show, but today you're going to be looking after videos and movies and all that type movies. of Movies. I'm filling in for Cameron today, so we've got a jam-packed show full of fantastic movies, four to talk about today. And the first up, we have Annabelle. Now, Annabelle is one of the most talked about films of the year to be the most scariest and on the edge of your seat thriller. It's like a doll, isn't it? It's it got like tiny towels, red ribbon on her neck. A possessed yeah. doll. That's right, she wears Demon a white dress. Demon possesses the doll and comes to life and inflicts, you know, pain yeah. on everybody around her. Now, if you've seen The Conjuring, that was another awfully scary movie that came out mm. a year or two ago. So this is a prequel to that. And it stars actors and actresses such as Annabelle Wallace, Ward Horton and many more. Uh, so go along with your loved ones and you'll frighten them to death. This... <laughs> oh! Here's a trailer. Can we show the trailer? <laughs> John, wake up. What's that? Next door, I, I heard a scream. Stay here. I'll go check it out. Is everything all right? Oh my God, you're covered in blood. Go back inside. It's not mine. It's not. Go back inside and call an ambulance right now. Go. I like your dogs. You survived. You don't come out the other side of something like this weaker. What is there left to be scared of? This is the last of them. How did that get in there? I swear, I threw it out. Things must have got mixed up. There, she fits right in. is a ghost. Sometimes demons can attach themselves to objects. What do I do? Protect your family. I was saying to Taylor, you know when you get those movies that go... <laughs> They're the creepiest mm. ones. Can you see the resemblance? I've dressed up like Annabelle today. Of Can course, I could I could tell the difference, but you're... <laughs> oh, yeah, no, you're... oh yeah, you do look really oh, like that. Oh, don't zoom up. Amazing, the likeness is just amazing. What's the second movie? And that, that's out now, for the people Beautiful. who are wondering, Thank so you. go and see it, that'll be fantastic. Next we have Dracula Untold. Now this film was all about how Durac Dracula came to be the famous person that he Dracula is. or Dracula? Dracula, sorry, oh. Dracula. I'm thinking Plus Dracula. Eight. Dracula. No, yeah, like Dracula, I'm, I'm vampire just, Dracula. Dracula, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the cast of Dracula Untold is Luke Evans, Sarah uh, Gaiden, mm -hmm. and it's a PG film, so it's one for the whole family. Oh, really? Yeah. For the whole family? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> it's probably not as scary as the last movie. Annabelle. But if you're into the action thriller, if you're into vampires and that sort of thing, Dracula Untold is a film for you. So here's the trailer. The Sultan is preparing for battle. It requires 1,000 boys for his army, including your son. Run to your mother. Look away! You can't protect us. I'll find a way. I have been waiting an eternity for a man of your strength to arrive. Welcome to your life. 
what is it you are seeking? I want the power to destroy my enemies and save my family. There's no turning back. Drink, Dracula. Welcome to your life. What's happening to you? I'm the thing men fear. Not a ghost. Something else. There's a See the devil inside him! Do you think you are alive because you can fight? You are alive because of what I did to save you! The world. Never forget who I am. Untold is out in cinemas on October 9th. You want to go and see that? Yeah, thank you. Can't you see the resemblance, people? Come on. Oh, you don't look anything like him. <laughs> Not like him, but Annabelle. Okay. Let's move on. Next, we've got a great film. It's called Gone Girl, starring, starring uh, Ben Affleck and Rosamund Pike. It's an This movie has been widely talked about all over the globe. Yeah, but Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. Yeah. You know, he hasn't been around in a while, and no, this is a film that's going to be, you know, hopefully win him something special. It's a, The film is full of twists and turns, so if you like that sort of movie, right. then this is the one for you. Are you right there, Fred? Are you sure you bought those this morning? Of course I did. I'm surprised mm. there's any left. <laughs> I'm not, trust me. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm like surprised I said, we've got any crew left. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, ben Like Affleck. I said, yes, Ben Affleck mm -hmm. uh, in yeah, Gone Girl. It's a great film. You've got to go and see it. And What's it's, it about? It's all about, okay, Ben Affleck, mm -hmm. uh, his wife goes missing. Right. And the story all unfolds about trying to find his wife and whether she's murdered or gone missing. That would missing. be a man's dream. Imagine <laughs> wife going missing. Why would he look for her? <laughs> oh, that's not very nice. But the whole thing, Ben Affleck plays a character that mm. is sweet and innocent and no one could think anything, oh. you know, other than innocence from him. But it turns out that something else might be was going ben on. Was Ben Affleck the one going that was on. in the one with Liberace a while ago, the movie? No. Oh, I'm thinking of the no, one. Matt, Matt Damon. Damon. I knew there was a similarity there. None of them. <laughs> Sorry, it's a popcorn. <laughs> so here's the trailer for Gone Girl. Nick Dunn, you're probably the most hated man in America right now. Did you kill your wife, Nick? Everyone told us and told us marriage is hard work. Not for me and Nick. As you all know, my wife, Amy Elliott Dunn, disappeared three days ago. I had nothing to do with the disappearance of my wife. I have nothing to hide. Sammy got friends we can talk to? No, not really. You don't know if she has friends, you don't know what she does all day, and you don't know your wife's blood type. Just being a good guy, so everybody can see him being a good guy. Well, you really don't like him, do you? All I'm trying to do is be nice to the people who are volunteering to help find Amy. I will practice believing my husband loves me, but I could be wrong. You ever see that guy in the glasses before? Amy is the kind of girl who attracts admirers. Whoever took her is bound to bring her back. I'm hoping you can tell me what this means. You want to solve Amy's treasure hunt? You seen this girl around here? Yeah, I remember her. I know you. I saw you at the volunteer center. I wanted to help. What'd she want? She wanted a gun. We are all scared that we are all here now. I feel like something to be jettisoned if necessary. I feel like I could disappear. The hallmark of a sociopath is a lack of empathy. Amy lost a lot of blood in there, then somebody mopped it up. Why would they mop up the blood if they're trying to stage a crime scene? Whatever they found, I think it's safe to assume that it's very bad. I'd finally realized I am frightened of my own husband. I would draw you as if you do in a deposition what to say, what not to say. A trained monkey? A trained monkey who doesn't get lethal injections. She's going to eat you alive. You assaulted her? It's not good enough for you? I hit her? It's not even close. Absolutely not. I never touched her. We now believe Nick is involved in the disappearance of our daughter. Without a body, without a murder weapon, their only hope is a confession. You don't know anything yet? You need to tell me. How was your marriage, Nick? Are you asking me if I killed my wife? Man of my dreams, this man of mine may kill me. What about my son? Nick! This man may kill me. In her own words, this man may truly kill me. You ever hear the expression, the simplest answer is often the correct one? 
Actually, I've never found that to be true. Gone Girl looks really good. It's out now, so and go we've and we've got see one it. more movie to look we've at. We've got one more. It's mm. called The Judge, and it stars Robbie Downey Jr., mm. normally in Iron Man, so that's a different I role do for know him. him. Yep. And it's all about he's a judge. He is a lawyer, sorry, yep. and his father is a judge. Now, what's happened is uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s character goes back to his hometown to be with his mm. dad, but at the time, his dad is being charged for murder. Mm. And the story all unfolds about whether his father actually is guilty of the murder or not. And Rob Downey Jr.'s character plays his lawyer. Wow. Yeah. So it's a oh, I won't bother watching it Why? Now. It sounds very interesting. <laughs> oh, I know what happens there. There's no oh, time no, I can't do be bothered. You? No, it doesn't interest me. So Suppose we were to look at the, the let's trailer. Let's look at the trailer and anyway, see not? what you think about it. See what you're not missing. <laughs> Judge Palmer, you've been on the bench how long? 42 years. Just lost your wife? Tough day. You were tired, in the dark, visibility poor. Do you remember hitting the victim? I'm going to impale your father on a first degree murder charge, and you get a front row seat. So tell me what happened. This was an accident, period. Any decent lawyer can argue this easily. And by decent, I mean honest. We both know he didn't intentionally hit him, right? But if we can gain sympathy from the jury, they'll never convict you. I sat on the bench in that courtroom for 42 years. The people in this community trust me. They trust the law. I'd rather die in prison than be remembered like that. I can't help you if you won't let me do my job. You're a lawyer. He's your father. You leave now, you will regret it. I don't need preparing. You've never sat on a witness stand. You've never been in that seat. He was tough. Remember fishing? He used to tell us all to be quiet. You are scared, scared of the, the fish, fish away. Right? He is a liar who thinks he can operate under the color of the law just like his son. My father's a lot of unpleasant things. Your murderer's not one of them. I have memories of us. Why? Was I tough on you? Yes. I did what I thought was right. You cannot lose this case. You're not my lawyer. You're not my lawyer. You're on the stand as a witness. Answer my question. You and I are finally done. But we're not done. I'll paint your father as a holier-than-thou prick determined to see what he considers justice served. My father is a holier-than-thou prick determined to see what he considers justice served. So it's going to be a light day. <laughs> That's fun. Judge Taylor. It's out on October 9. Looks good, Taylor. Let's have That's a look at the top good. five movies around Australia as they stand. And let's start at number five. Taylor. Number five, we had Step Up All mm. In. Number four. Planes, Fire and Rescue, one great for the school holidays. Number three. The Box Trolls. Number two. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Number one. And number one, The Maze Runner. And for all of you out there that like The Hunger Games, yep. The Maze Runner is very, very good. And can I just say for all those people out there that like Cameron, <laughs> Taylor did a really good job. There's not much difference between you and Cameron, only that you're better. Oh, that's not very nice. Cameron's very good. He is good. He should enjoy doing fashion and whatever he's doing. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching today. Thank you to Thank Taylor. Thank you. Thanks for having we'll me We'll have to have you again. back again, maybe in a week or two's time, doing something different. Possibly. Um, can I just say, Taylor's going to have some great news. She won't tell me what it is yet. <laughs> it's all secret. Stop! She's done this little interview with someone. <laughs> And I hope she wins a million dollars out of it. She's such a great legend and she'll tell us about it very soon when you can. I will tell you as soon as I can. You, will, you won't wait till I die, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank not. you very much for everybody for watching the show. It's nice to be back. We look forward to having your company next week once again here on the couch. I'm going to do something really, really clever. Yes. I'm going to see how many of these Chubby marshmallows. Bunnies. See you next week. You around the big ones. Okay, the big, big ones. Okay. Yeah, the big ones. One, two, two three. You're not doing it right, though. Chubby bunny. Two chubby bunnies. I lost count. This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Cafe Bella Vista Restaurant and Pizzeria. Azito, give it a go with Azito. Refresh pure water. And Reading Cinemas, experience the difference.